Welcome back. Welcome back to Midday. We begin our midday today with Brian Henderson, the bartender from Storms on the River. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Susan. Yes, it's great to have you. In the past, we've gone to Storms, actually, and uh, gone behind the bar with you, and you've made a few drinks for us already. Correct. And yes, we have. That was fun. But uh, now Brian's going to join us for uh, once a month to make us some fun drinks. Uh, first of all, though, it's the first day of spring, so we're it celebrating is. that. And uh, Storms is a great place to be in the warmer weather. There's Very no much. question. We have some pictures, of course. Most people in town, of course, know where Storms is. This is uh, the front end of it. I don't know how recent this shot is, to be honest, but as we take a look at the uh, pictures on the back, this sort of tells the story about summertime, doesn't it? It does. It looks nice out there. It does. It looks gorgeous. It's a beautiful spot to be. I'm imagining your patio is not quite set up yet. Getting there. Getting there, hey? What, did you guys aim for like May or June? Or? Uh, weather pending, you know, the sooner the better, but it can be chilly towards the end of the night, but sure. it looks nice out there, and we got some heaters out there too for people. So yeah, it's beautiful, very great. comfortable. So looking forward to patio time, absolutely. But today, we're going to learn how to make a martini the right way. The I think correct way. There's a lot of different takes on martinis. There are, yes, yeah. many. And yeah. um, just over the years, you kind of learn these techniques and the equipment you use. And today, we've got the basic ingredients here. We've got mixing glasses. We've got Boston shakers, Hawthorne strainers. We've got a good gin here. We've got some ice. And we're just going to make these as cold as we can get mm -hmm. and go from there. What is the most important thing about making a good martini? Cold. The, the colder, colder the better, better. Yeah. yes, absolutely. And what about the gin or the vodka that you choose? Uh, it depends on what your personal preference is. You can go to the liquor store and have a look at the bottles and kind of pick and choose what I want to have. Uh, when you go to a bar or restaurant, when you come to our place, you can have a look through with our vodkas and our gins that we have there and pick and choose what you want. Um, right. Quite often, martinis historically did have vermouth in them. When people ask me about it, I kind of think about vermouth or I might look at the bottle. That's about it. Right. Okay, I don't use it that much. Is that right? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I just kind of prefer not to. I prefer straight for the gin flavor. All right, well, let's get started. I think we're making two different martinis. What yeah. are, they, are they different? Well, they're going to be the same ingredients, but we're just going to use one with olives and one with a twist. Okay. Pretty straightforward, but this is like the basic foundation of bartending, to do this and to use this equipment and use it right. Okay, and All I'm right. going to try my hand at making yes, a Yes, you are going to try your hand at making one. A little backstory about me. Uh, I used to be a server at Butchard Gardens in the fine dining facility, and at a very young age, they had me mixing up drinks, Brian, and I think you would have shuddered to see me <laughs> because we didn't have a per se bartender, so we all had to sort of pull our, our own weight, but I don't know that my martinis were the best ever. They wouldn't be like yours. Well, we're going to up the level here. We're going to up the ante today. Okay. Yes, okay. So, first of all, the glasses. We want to have these chilled, so that's why we have the ice in them. Okay. Okay, now this glass here, this is technically, it's a V-shaped cocktail glass. Came to us in 1925 at the Art Deco Exposition in Paris, France. Mm. The martini drink was around a lot long before that, and it just got put into this glass so often that the glass took on the name of the drink. Okay. All right. So if you come up to my bar and you ask me for a drink in a martini glass, I know exactly what you're talking about. Some places you ask for a V-shaped cocktail glass, I'll kind of look at you and go, uh, okay. what are you talking about? Yeah. Okay. So those are chilling. These are our mixing glasses. Okay. We're going to fill them full of ice. You can have that one. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. How is it that you know so much history about things like this? What kind of training did you take? Um, the foundation for my bartending skills happened in Fernie many years ago in the early 90s. And after I started a couple years of that, I realized, you know, I can do this a little bit more, but where am I going to learn from this? And mm -hmm. how can I take this bartending to a different level? And I decided to go work on cruise ships. Mm. So that idea popped in my head, and it took me about a year by the time I actually thought about it to where I actually got on a ship. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just started realizing there's a lot of people on here with a lot of different skills, and a lot of the companies I work for were constantly bringing on professionals and teaching us techniques like this. Basic right. stuff, but from there, it just progressed, and I started getting certificates and stuff like this from different companies that were, you know, promoting their products and how to do stuff. Right. And I just kept going and going and building and building and it got more and more and then 20 years on cruise ships and I was like, okay. You did 20 years on cruise ships? That's a lot of sailing. That is a lot of sailing, yeah. Okay. Trust okay. me on that, that is a lot of sailing. <laughs> and of course, when you're on a, working on a cruise ship, you're going to run into people from all over the world in terms of their knowledge experience of yeah. attending. So yeah, so everyone good. gives a little bit, takes sure. a little bit, and you just learn a lot. Okay, so. Okay, so we're going to pour gin into here. We're going to do about two ounce pour. Okay. For me, two ounces, if I put my hand on the mixing glass just like that and pour to the top of my fingers, that's about two ounces. Okay. You can do the same. Okay. It's a hard glass, or a hard, it's kind of a thick uh, base. And we're using Gin Mar here. It's a Mediterranean gin. Okay. Uh, gin, the, 
Basic flavoring is juniper, and it comes from the Dutch term Jennifer, which is juniper, and that's the flavoring. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff, it just starts as a neutral grain spirit, which is vodka, mm -hmm. and then the flavors are added to it. This one has some rosemary and some thyme and some olives and some basil thrown into it. Um, you got two ways to flavor this. You can do maceration, where you have a big vat of it, you pour your spices in there, mix it up, and out it comes. Or you do percolation when you're distilling the product. You can put it inside where the steam comes through and collects the flavors there. Okay. All right, this is your Boston shaker. Okay. Now, you better not do this on the stove because that might be disastrous. It's all right. We've, we've had all kinds <laughs> of things happen on the stove um, okay. over the years of cooking. So, square on. Use these two fingers like that. Get it nice and even. Give her one of those. And that should stay on there, just like that. Okay? I'm afraid to try that, so I won't. All right. So this is what we do here. One hand on each end, okay? Because mm -hmm. we shake it up and we let go, we're going to break some of the back here, or oh. camera. Okay. okay and let her rip. And we're good. All right, now to get these apart, two fingers on the glass, two fingers on the metal. This part of your fist, with a little bit of pressure on there. Oh, this could go badly. Yeah. Don't worry, we got this. <laughs> that just happened on the air. That just happened. Okay, well, my drink is done. <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> I'm not yes, surprised. Yes, that's fine. Sorry, I'll clean this up later. Okay, let's... We'll keep going with okay, you. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay. Yeah, I just, yeah. It's so, Monday. <laughs> well, this is chilling here. <laughs> Ooh, it smells good in here oh, suddenly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is chilling, that's chilling. <laughs> I'll give this a couple minutes. But my kind of theory is once you get ice on the side of this, yes. you're ready to rock you and roll. You know it's super cold, right? Okay. Okay. So we've got our olives here. We've got your standard ones here, stuffed with pimentos. We've got some on steroids here. We've got some garlic and blue cheese in there. Mm. Pretty straightforward. And yeah. we're also going to do a twist with a lemon. Okay. All right. Straightforward stuff with the lemon twist. You just want that part. Okay. So we're looking pretty good on this. How does that look? Get in there? I think it looks cool, very cold. So you will purposely leave it in here for a couple of minutes yes. to oh, yeah, allow yeah. that to get as cold yeah. as possible? And okay. quite often, even at the restaurant, I will have this ready and I'll bring it to the table and pour it out of the table. Just okay. from the time I pour it out the bar to where it gets to the table, that's, you know, a minute that might take too long. Okay, I might grab that uh, dishcloth from you. Okay. Just saying. Keep going though, keep going. All right, keep going, here we go. We're gonna get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Now with the Hawthorne strainer, you got this where your index fingers go, and you can close it up or open it up. This is going to get a little bit more chunk size, depending on if you want some floating in here or not. Okay. I like a little bit of ice. A little bit like of ice? That, yeah. Okay. So I'll leave it open a little bit more, and you'll get a whole bunch of slivers of ice in there. Which is nice. That makes yes. it super cold. So when you're looking at this, you can see you got a meniscus in there. So it's concave, and then all those little ice crystals are floating around in there, and it's going to keep the Lovely. drink kind of chilled. So we can have a regular olive, or we can have blue cheese and garlic. Let's hit the blue cheese. That girl. There nice. you go. Now you're ready. You can have that. Well, I, it's Monday. I don't it's know. It's Monday. What to do. <laughs> I might have a sip, but that would probably be as far as I can go on a Monday. Give That's her. Go. Looks delicious. I'm a lover of blue cheese as well. So, cheers, everybody. And it's Danish creamy blue cheese. Mm. I mean, it sounds good too, eh? Yeah, that is delightful. Very nice. Very cold, uh, and very clean and crisp. That's nice. the idea. Yeah. That's really good. All right. Okay. So we got that one. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the gin mare again. Okay. And there's different types. We got tank ray line. We got some Bombay up there. Uh -huh. Many different types. All right. All right. You want to have a go at this again? Um, sure. Let's okay. do it. I'm going to do it. Why not, right? You are going to accomplish this. I can. I'm not, I'm not going to do that same thing that I did, though. <laughs> okay. So we're good there. Gin. Okay. I'll do this part for you. There Thank you go. You. One okay. hand on each end. Yep. I'll and wait for shake you. Shake oh, away. Oh, is it just me? Yeah, okay, just you. Go. And what's the difference? We're doing it with uh, lemon this time? Yeah, we'll do it with lemon. Too. Or is it this way? Okay, so. It's this way. Yep. Glass on top. <laughs> yep. Two fingers on the glass. Yep. Two fingers on the shaker. There's no way I'm doing this twice. I'm just going to wedge You're it out. Gonna... I'll never get it out. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Now <laughs> you do this one. <laughs> just like that. And you can oh boy. get a couple extra drips out of there. Okay. And then we top it up with ice to keep it chilled. And in summertime, you can have the sitting on the patio and you can kind of add to your cocktail depending on what even you have in sure. there. It's quite straightforward. Yes. 
but these are the basic blocks for mixing drinks. So when you go somewhere and they have this equipment, if they're using it, excellent. If you see it there and they're not using it, it's like, come on guys, this is what you want to do with these drinks. You must find it hard sometimes to go out for drinks somewhere when you have your own preference, you have your own way, you spent 20 years doing this, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. We've got about 30 seconds, so I don't okay. want to... Um, I can finish it though. Okay. Should I try yeah. finishing, finishing you it with ice? finish it? Okay. This has been great. I like having you here. It's fun. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm going to try and leave out some slivers. Would you yeah. do it like this or two fingers? Yeah, or? you can do fingers on it if you want. Okay, so here we go. Looks reasonable. Yes, it does. Fantastic job. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so now with this, the lemon twist over top of the drink, give it a squeeze, and you can see the oil shooting out yes. there. Yes. Finger on the base so you don't spill Ooh, the glass, like and then it. around like so, and then shell up and in. Delightful. Just like that. Now with those oils on top, it's going to give a little different complexion to the drink, mm -hmm. and it's going to taste better, and you're going to smell the lemon as you bring oh, it. Oh, heavenly. And then some, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I like that one too. The lemon zest is very pungent. Good mm. first day of spring drink. Nicely done. Brian Henderson, nicely done. Thank you for putting up with me in my little accident here in the first go. Appreciate that. That one's going to make it onto uh, some social media sites, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so uh, thanks for being here. We look forward to you coming back next month. Looking forward to it too, Susan. Yes, and I'm looking forward to uh, heading down to Storms on the River. Their patio is fantastic. Check it out. Information on the screen. They're on River Street, of course, and the phone number is there as well. We're back after a quick break. Stay with us.